Hello guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of two Andronovo individuals, both are women, uh, both are from Tajikistan, Dashti Kazi in Tajikistan. Let's start with the first individual, her mitochondrial DNA is U2. This is what she is predicted to look like based on her raw DNA data. With my Nashakot she is predicted to have brown color eyes, snub shaped nose and black hair. With uh, Snipper Free also is predicted to have brown eyes, black hair and white skin. Uh, with my Hair ID tool she is actually predicted to have kinky or curly hair. And the likelihood of her having straight hair is only 3%, so definitely not straight, color, straight uh, hair shape. She was heterozygous for blue eye haplotype 1, blue eye haplotype 2, and blue eye haplotype 3, and she did not have BH4. So this implies that she had an ancestor that had BH1 and BH2 and BH3. Very interesting stuff. When it comes to DRD2's profenatine pro variation, she is heterozygous for it, meaning intermediate number of D2 dopamine receptors in the brain, intermediate risk of schizophrenia and other stuff. Uh, she has got A2, which is normal genotype in the TAC1 variation of DRD2, which means more dopamine D2 receptors. Uh, this is normal. This is typical uh, amount of D2 dopamine receptors for humans. Normal risk of OCD, AGHD, and alcohol dependence compared to the high risk with people who have um, A1A1. Now, when it comes to COMT, she is warrior, which means advantage in memory and attention tasks. More dopamine building up in her system, less COMT enzyme activity, less dopamine reuptake. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. Very stereotypically European genotype to have. And for EDAR, she actually does not have East Asian EDAR. She does not have derived EDAR. She seems to have uh, very not East Asian facial traits, not shell shaped incisors, and no other East Asian traits. She does not have European lactose persistence mutation, uh, which means that if she was a European, she probably would be lactose intolerant. Uh, she might have had some other lactose persistence mutations uh, attributed to other people, like Central Asians, or I don't know, but there's probably some other lactose persistence mutations that she had. When it comes to myopia, she seems to have the European anti-myopia mutation, and she also has this very rare genotype. Uh, as you can see, it's only 0.1% of people have this genotype, and this genotype uh, leads to a lower risk of nearsightedness, so she probably was not nearsighted. When it comes to polygenic traits and illnesses, she has a super high risk score for Crohn's disease, she has a high risk score for Parkinson's disease, um, she has a high risk score for coronary heart disease, She's got an average risk score for type 1 diabetes. She's got an average risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, she's got a super high risk score for stroke. She's got a average risk score for type 2 diabetes. She's got a average risk score for gout. Um, she's got a low risk score for bipolar disorder. And she's got an average risk score for asthma. Now, uh, with her G25 and GD match, you will see that she's actually not a Sintashta, at least not entirely Sintashta individual, and she has 15 to 25 percent BMAC or Southern, uh, some kind of native Central Asian admixture. Because of that, she's most similar to Tajiks and not to Northern Europeans. And with Eurogenes K13, once again, you can see she's kind of similar to have various Sarmatians that I've been covering on my channel. Sarmatians also score around 25% West Asian and around 6 to 9% South Asian like her. So she is similar to Sarmatians uh, because just like Sarmatians, she's a mixture of Sintashta with some BMAC. So she's not uh, entirely uh, typical Andronovo. She's an Andronovo outlier because of her large BMAC admixture. Uh, you can see BMAC admixture here, 17.5% Indian, that's all from BMAC admixture, for example, here on MZLPK16. Uh, closest to Mishar Tatars, very high distances, uh, followed by people from Badakhshan, and actually she's getting modeled here as a mixture of people plus, uh, from Badakhshan plus Islandic, so a mixture of Tajik or South Central Asian plus Islandic, uh, and actually more Tajik than Islandic. This is what she scores with MZLP K11. The majority component here is Caucasus Hunter Gatherer at 34.37%. It's not a EHG, it's really Caucasus admixture, it's just a mislabeled component. And she's actually getting modeled here as a mixture of Sintashta plus Iran Mesolithic. Line, line, line number 2, 72% Sintashta, 28% Iran Mesolithic. And also look at uh, line number 11, 77% Andronovo in Neolithic plus which is uh, misnamed, it's not in Neolithic, plus 22% Iran Mesolithic, very interesting stuff. So she seems to be a mixture of Andronovo, typical Andronovo, plus around 20 or 22% Iran Mesolithic or something from West Asia, basically BMAC or Iranian Neolithic farmers or something of that, of that sort. And this is very different from the second individual you're going to see later. 
Uh, this is what she scores with uh, Ancient Eurasia K6. You can see she's scoring 6.45% uh, Ancestral South Eurasian, quite a lot of Ancestral South Eurasian admixture. And she's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Steppe, Middle, Late, Bronze Age, plus Baloch, or Brahui, or Makrani. But the Oracle here is not so good, so I wouldn't pay too much attention to that. Now let's move on to the second individual, also a woman, but her mitochondrial DNA is different. Her mitochondrial DNA, as you can see here, is T2A. Uh, this is what she is predicted to look like. My Akiat V2 actually gave her an interesting prediction for eye color. Uh, it's, gi it's giving her like a pink ring in the middle. What it's really supposed to be, it's supposed to be a redder color, but if you add red on top of blue, that gives you pink. So that's why it's, it's, in, it's in pink color here. Uh, she's predicted to have blue eyes, Greek shaped nose, and blonde hair. Uh, with snipper free she's also predicted to have blue eyes blonde hair and white skin she's got blue eye haplotype 1 and blue eye haplotype 2 does not have bh3 or bh4 uh, she's got some genotypes for light european skin tone uh, she's also got this uh, very interesting genotype in the tier gene for uh, blue eye and blonde hair but this is most typical in mediterranean people so it's interesting that she's got this genotype here and she does not have the european hunter gatherer blue eye and red hair mutation i just decided to write that here even though I didn't write it for the previous individual. And with a hair ID, she's actually predicted to have curly hair, followed by wavy, followed by straight. And the lowest likelihood of uh, hair shape for her is kinky at 2%. She has got this genotype, uh, H63D, two copies. I have it as well. And it's actually called the Celtic Curse. It's hemochromatosis, which is iron overload in the body. It's called the Celtic Curse because it's most common in uh, Northwest Europeans today, specifically in Irish people, but I have this exact genotype here, also super rare genotype, and I'm Russian, and she has got it as well, and she's as far from, like, Celtic as you can get, which is kind of interesting, right, that she has this genotype, and I have this genotype as well, pretty interesting stuff. Now, for MTHFR, she's got this genotype, which uh, decreases her efficiency of processing folic acid, but they can be easily supplemented with folic acid supplements, and um, she's got this genotype in DRD2, so she actually does have the European no-go learning variation. In fact, she has two copies for this, so she's definitely very European in her genotype, uh, much lower risk of schizophrenia and less dopamine D2 receptors, and she's got A2A2 genotype in this variation of DRD2, which is once again very normal uh, for Europeans or humans in general. Uh, this actually leads to more dopamine D2 receptors and lower odds of uh, ADHD, tardive dyskinesia, and alcohol dependence. Uh, very interesting stuff, and she does have uh, heterozygous genotype in Comte's Valmet gene, so she is uh, heterozygous for the warrior gene. She has intermediate level of dopamine in her brain, based on her genotype here. Uh, she does have the sociopath gene, at least this variation of OXTR. She's got two derived variants here, so uh, take that as, as you wish. Um, decreased OXTR expression, higher odds of depression, autism, and socio so sociopathy, of course. For myopia, she uh, does have the European variation that protects against myopia, which is pretty cool. She might not be nearsighted, might not need glasses, and she does have the European lactose persistence mutation, which is very surprising. I was not expecting this. I did not see any sarmations with this mutation, and I did not uh, so far see any... Well, I did see one. I saw only one um, Andronovo or Sintashta individual who had this variation. So it's surprising to me that she has the European lactose persistence mutation. It's pretty rare for her uh, ethnicity. Now, when it comes to polygenic traits and illnesses, she has a high risk score for Parkinson's disease. She has an average risk score for schizophrenia. Um, she's got a low risk score for coronary heart disease. Um, she's got a low risk score for type 2 diabetes. Um, she's got an average risk score for bipolar disorder. Um, she's got a low risk score for type 1 diabetes. She's got an average, actually a low risk score for asthma. And she's got an average risk score for brain aneurysm. Now, as you can instantly see here, this individual is a lot more northern than the previous woman. She's actually more close to various northern Europeans, such as Erzia, Finnish, Moksha, Russians. She is more similar to various northeast Europeans because she's more northern. She doesn't have as much BMAC admixture. So the previous sample was scoring 29, I think, percent West Asian. This one is scoring 21 percent West Asian, and instead of 9 percent South Asian, she's scoring six and a half percent South Asian. Typical Sarmatian would be like between this woman and the previous woman. By the way, this woman also is kind of an outlier. This woman is also not a typical Andronovo individual, and relative to typical Andronovo, she still has a shift towards BMAC and Urania Neolithic farmers. Uh, you see with MZLPK11, it's still different from the previous individual. She's not as extremely southern as the previous woman. Uh, her largest category here is actually European hunter-gatherers. 
but relative to the typical Andronovo, she's still a little bit shifted towards uh, Anatolian Ch Chalcolithic or some kind of West Asian groups. Not as much as the previous individual, who was a mixture of, if you remember, 80% Andronovo, actually 77% Andronovo in Neolithic and 23% Iran Mesolithic. So this woman is a lot more northern and a lot more uh, typical Andronovo than the previous woman. You see, the thing about these Andronovo samples is that they're all actually really diverse. Like Sintashta is not that diverse. Sintashta, for example, for most of them score around the same area. But Andronovo samples, some of them are really heavy on the BMAC admixture. Some of them have up to 25% BMAC admixture, whereas the others are pretty much pure Sintashta. So Andronovo samples are very diverse. Uh, this sample seems to be around uh, slightly more BMAC than average for Andronovo, so you can see she's getting modeled as a mixture of Icelandic plus Jat or Scottish plus Jat, a mixture of basically Northwestern European and South Central Asian. She's scoring 24% Baloch here. Not a single Northern European today scores 24% Baloch on Harappa World, let me tell you that much. Not a single Northern European in Northern Europe today scores like this with Harappa World. And she's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Lithuanian plus Brahvi or Lithuanian plus various Southeast Iranian and Southwest Pakistani groups. So relative to the North Europeans today, definitely there is a lot of drift, a lot of shift, I should say, towards South Central Asia. And with Pandiana LK10, she, she is not as extremely Southern as the previous woman, but she is also not quite a typical Andronovo. She's still an outlier and the average Andronovo individual is more Northern than her. Uh, so the average Andronovo individual would score maybe 70% or 75% Estonian plus 25% Makrani here. And here with ancient Eurasia KC, you see you see the numbers are different even here. She's less Natufian, she's more West European hunter-gatherer, and she's less ancestral South Eurasian than the previous individual. She's also, I think, less ancestral North Eurasian as well. So she's just more European than the previous individual. And uh, still getting modeled as a mixture of Steppe, Middle Age, Bronze Age, plus Baloch or Markrani, but th the proportions are all the way different. For the previous individual, it was 70% Steppe ML MLBA plus 30% Baloch. Here it's... 78 and 21, so it's a different proportion, right? And uh, but still, there is a shift relative to a state. I mean, a step middle late Bronze Age, there is a shift uh, towards Baloch and various South Central Asians. This is still an outlier sample. This, these, the two samples that you see in this video, they are both outlier samples. The second sample is maybe not as much of an outlier as the first one, but they are both outlier samples. You can download both these samples in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description, and leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Goodbye.